Hit on me! Hit on three! One, two, three! Hey. Hustle! Let's go! Let's go! Pee Wee football. For boys between the ages of 5 and 15, it can be the scene of big fun, big dreams, yeah! and big hits. Yeah! Yeah! Some of them dangerous. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> but 12-year-old Michael McHale of Tampa, Florida, wasn't concerned about the risks. He dreamed of following in the same path as his father, former NFL lineman Tom McHale. When I was little, I was like, yeah, that's where I'm going to go, NFL. Did you think that was kind of neat that your dad played in the NFL? Oh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. My dad played in the NFL. Your dad's a business guy. My dad played in the NFL. McHale played nine NFL seasons with three different teams, then coached two of his sons in football after his career ended. Those were his boys, and I think that it was one of those things that we always envision one day sitting in a stadium and watching our boys play. Today, Michael plays lacrosse while his younger brother Matthew plays tennis. Neither of the boys is allowed to play football. I used to think that the worst thing that could ever happen from playing football is you could tackle incorrectly and break your neck and live your life paralyzed. I had no idea that there was something so much bigger. Tom and Lisa McHale became parents for the first time in 1994. Tom retired from football the next year, but constant joint pain led him to abuse prescription painkillers. He became addicted, began to use other drugs, and in May 2008, Tom McHale died of an overdose that his wife says was accidental. How did you break the news to your, to your kids? Hardest thing I ever had to do. I told him that daddy must have been sicker than we thought because God had taken him home. And he wasn't coming back. An autopsy showed Tom had developed chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a form of brain damage which has been found in more than 20 deceased NFL players. What was your reaction to the finding that he had CTE? I just remember bawling. I remember thinking, oh my God, he, he, never, he never stood a chance. And I saw what he was up against, and I saw it, it, it just, for the first time, it made sense that that's, that's what happened. That's why Tom wasn't able to beat this. Because be, people beat addiction every day. What role were you led to believe football played in the development of his CTE? Nobody can say with absolute certainty that it was caused by football, but they know it was caused by repetitive trauma to the head and that the general population doesn't have it. So the bottom line is football did that to my husband. So for my kids, I just, I can't take that risk. I can't. Can you understand where Lisa McHale is coming from? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Eddie Mason played six years as an NFL linebacker, retiring from the Redskins in 2002 after multiple injuries, including seven concussions. He now lives in Virginia and coaches his six-year-old son, Elisha, in a flag football league. Why'd you sign Elisha for flag instead of tackle? That sport comes with a, a high price in terms of the body and uh, knee injuries, neck injuries. We see some of the violence of the sport today. And for me, it was more about protecting my son's body. The reality is my kids are my kids, and I get a chance to choose and put them in a safe environment. One, two, three, Redskins! Good job, baby. There are no statistics or surveys to say how many NFL players and their families are concerned about introducing their children to tackle football. But anecdotal cases are emerging. Several retired players, including Vikings lineman Brad Culpepper and Steelers tight end Mark Bruner, said that they're keeping their sons in flag football while young. Then there's current Seahawk offensive lineman Chester Pitts who testified at a congressional hearing last year on head injuries in youth football. You know, I have a three-year-old son now, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty sure the only person that's going to wear pads and a helmet in that house will be me. I, um, if I have the opportunity to gravitate my kids to a different sport, basketball, baseball, down. soccer, you One. know, I'm going to do that. Count them down. Two. If they decide down. to do, you know, tackle Three. later, then, you know, I may, I may be open to that. To me, it's Sisification. 
That's and I think that's the only way to put it. <laughs> Former Redskin LeVar Arrington is one player who says he won't hesitate to sign up his three-year-old son, LeVar II. Oh, how you tackle? Let me see. <laughs> his eldest son, 11-year-old Kino, already plays a linebacker, just like his father. These kids are not going to be necessarily fast enough or strong enough that if they're playing the game correctly, that they actually can inflict the type of harm on themselves that will, will kill them or, or will keep them from being able to be productive citizens in, in school and different things like that. Still, the threat of serious injury looms. Football is at its core a collision sport. A game often led by volunteer coaches who use questionable techniques, as was the case with these eight-year-olds. I see a lot of concussions. Uh, during the football season, I think I saw 157 concussions in one month. Fingers out wide. Make a fist. Thumb Matt Grady is a pediatric sports medicine specialist who uh, applauds Mason and other NFL veterans who have waited to introduce right. tackle football to their sons. Last August, a nationwide study of emergency room records, which the authors say represent just a fraction of the head injuries that occur in youth sports, found the concussion rate among 7 to 11 year olds in football is eight times that of soccer, basketball, and baseball. Only hockey has a higher rate. If you get a concussion at 10 or 11 or 12, you are predisposed uh, to get future concussions um, at a different rate than if you had never had one. So if we can minimize the number of concussions that occur uh, in that middle school population, we may be reducing the risk of getting concussion at the high school level. So you're saying wait until high school to play tackle football? As a parent, if I was worried about my child getting a concussion, I would say wait, yes. I won't live life scared, okay? I will not. I will not go through my life scared. And I don't want my children to go through life scared. I started playing football when I was eight years old. It's something that that has taught me countless amounts of, of lessons. And I would never, ever not want to give that opportunity do it, to my children. Don't, do Don't you think that there's some other way that our kids could, you know, develop character and learn teamwork? Don't you think there's some other way, some other sport that they could learn them? 30 all. So for now, the McHale boys will stick with sports with a lower risk of injury. Their mother says she'll only let them return to football if the culture of the game changes. You have to understand that I lost my very best friend and my kids lost their dad. Sometimes it just, it amazes me that my kids are fatherless. And that just seems like way too heavy a price to pay for playing a game.